Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here. And to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. On the surface of things, it may appear that to the ordinary person, most religions are pretty much the same. Now, whilst I agree that there are a number of similarities across most religions, for example, the promotion of virtue and the hope of an afterlife, there are some significant differences as well. One of those differences is the way different religions come to the understanding of the pathway to holiness, or the pathway to purity, or the pathway to enlightenment. For most religions, the journey to becoming perfect is an outside-in journey. What I mean by that is you become aware of all the virtues, the rules, the laws, the behaviours, whatever. And you apply your willpower and self-discipline to those things so that eventually you might reach that goal of becoming like this or like that or acceptable to God in some way. Over time, enough willpower and enough obedience leads you to this ideal. Now, the problem with that journey of holiness through virtues is that eludes most of us, all but the very pious and most self-disciplined people. Now, on the surface of things, it might appear that Christianity is the same. Learn the words of Jesus, be aware of the teachings of Jesus, and try and follow those as best you can. But this understanding of Christianity misses the most important ingredient. You see, the gospel of Jesus Christ approaches holiness in an entirely different way. God knows we're not perfect. God knows that the condition of our lives is borne out by a problem in our very souls. And we just don't have the resources of changing that. No amount of obeying laws or self-discipline can actually fix the inner problem of the soul. It is as if we try to fix the disease of measles by applying band-aids. The band-aids may cover the sores, but they don't deal with the underlying blood condition. And rules and standards and religious practices are similar. They give us something to do that's virtuous, but they don't fix the underlying problem of the soul. Obeying laws will never produce holiness deep inside where it needs to. So, according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, God, through our faith, comes in himself through the Spirit and cleanses our soul. He washes the inner parts of our conscience, of our being, our souls, our spirits. And as we respond to that cleansing over time, his spirit brings change within us. There is fruit. It comes out naturally. In Christianity, therefore, holiness is not something we earn or attain to. It's a gift, something given to us. Now, the Apostle Peter knows this all too well. He had his fair share of mishaps. So boastful about his loyalty to Jesus, he claimed that there's nothing that could happen that would make him question his loyalty. And yet he finds himself, when push comes to shove, denying that he even knew Jesus, denying any connection with Jesus. So violently he denied it, wanted to do anything to distance himself from Jesus to save his own skin. And not just once either, three times. Yet, there was an encounter with Jesus after the resurrection where he was forgiven and cleansed. Peter knew the feeling of what it is for holiness and forgiveness and cleansing to be given to you, not earned. Listen to what he says in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his spirit made you holy. 
As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. His spirit has made you holy. And that's the difference in Christianity that we don't make ourselves holy. His spirit makes us holy. Our contribution is that we believe. We believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, that he rose again. We accept and believe this, and the Bible teaches the Holy Spirit then comes to cleanse the innermost parts of our soul. Certainly not what we deserve, but what we desperately need. And notice verse 2 as well. As a result, you have obeyed him. Notice that obedience to God is still the desired outcome. But obedience comes as a cause of holiness, not as an effort toward it. He does the changing from the inside out. And our lives are perfected by the Holy Spirit. And the fruit becomes obvious. I want all Christians everywhere to realize that the journey is not about pretending to be good. The journey of Christianity, the journey of faith is about trusting God through his spirit to cleanse us, his grace, cleaning us out so that we can change into what God wants us to be from the inside out through what he does in our life. It's your love and thankfulness to God that will make you more like Jesus, not your willpower. He is the one that does his work in and through you. Let me pray. Our Lord, our response is only one of thanks. We can't do anything else except thank you. And though you expect us to keep in step with you and walk with you, Lord, to let our consciences be purified by your word and your instruction, to pay attention to your promptings, we know that it all comes from you and from the inside out. Lord, your work does such a wonderful job in our life that we shouldn't even need laws because our love for you and our thankfulness to you keeps us growing to be more and more like you. This is my prayer for all Christians everywhere, that they would stop trying to perform and trust instead. And so, Lord, we give this to you, our holiness. We thank you that it is a gift and we thank you that it's working its way out in reality in our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Keep reading the word of God and listening to what he might say through it. When he does speak, make sure you follow his prompting. Look for opportunities to bless others and we'll see you soon.